Okay, great. My name's Robin. Um, I just wanted to quickly say thank you to Sarah Mahata and Wendy for organising this. Um, I'm going to talk for about eight minutes, if you could let me know when it's eight minutes, and then I'm going to show you a short film. Um, so we're going to talk about two collections that we have at Park, which is Photography in the Archive Research Centre at LCC. One is camera work and the other is called the John Wall Archive of the Directory of British Photographic Collections. Camera Art Collection has a unique content which tells a fascinating and largely untold story of community-led photography in England during the 70s, 80s and 90s. The collection also contains material from Cockpit Arts, which was in Holborn, and the Half Moon Photography Workshop, which is what came before camera work. It's a significant body of prints, posters, correspondence, business reports, negatives, transparencies and objects. These charts, the original proposal for setting up Half Moon, a community-based photography workshop in East London, right through to Camera Work's extensive publishing and touring programme. Early Camera Work exhibitions included those by Nick Hedges, Martin Parr, Anna Fox and Ed Barber. Originally, Camera Work was a small volunteer-run gallery. It evolved to housing a publication and a channel of affordable touring shows, which were sent out in boxes with actually suitcases, laminated prints that people could pay what they could afford to host. So it's a very accessible way of getting material out. Publication challenged readership about perceptions towards photography, reassessing photography's role within society, and often dedicating whole issues to a particular subject, such as the Lewisham issue, where images and press responses to the National Front March of 1977 were examined by the publication. Camera work evolved around a left-wing ideology and collective, ever political. Both would change over time and the magazine would publish its final issue in 1985. Some more. Uh, this is the office. <coughs> this is the magazine, a couple of issues in the magazine early on. And this is the director of Half Moon Now called Chris, who's just been in as one of our researchers. Uh, I'm going to move on to the John Wall papers. Uh, the papers were donated to the centre researcher Bob Pullen's work on the Directory of Photographic Collections in the UK, which is basically a digital version of what John Wall was trying to do originally, and it's still ongoing. For some years, the filing cabinet which held the wallpapers was stored in the centre's small office and was inaccessible, but the opening of an archive room in Park's new space at LCC in 2014 made it possible to begin to examine the papers and build research into a unique 1970s project. One of the things that we wanted to do was to see how we could make sense of this mass of papers and bring it to life. The archive is mainly made up of letters from Wall to archivists and collection managers, responses to the appeal for information about collections and hundreds and hundreds of file cards. Making a collection of file cards, letters and minutes and meetings come alive is no easy task. And because of this, we examined ways in which we could bring to life this collection, make it more user-friendly and visual than that of the camera work papers. John Wall was an enthusiastic <coughs> amateur photographer, a doctor of divinity and a committed member and later fellow of the RPS, the Royal Photographic Society. In 1972, the group suggested the compilation of a national photographic record. The Directory of British Photographic Collections was published by the RPS in 1977. In the introductory section, Wall noted that the Directory provides a comprehensive account of all the photographic collections in, of note in the British Isles in response to a widespread need felt and voiced increasingly in the world of photography at large. He was at pains to point out that every kind of photographic collection has been the subject of this inquiry. None has been excluded from our consideration. Private or commercial, personal or open to public view, published or unpublished, historic or contemporary, negatives, 
copy negatives, or positive prints and transparencies. In the introduction, Wall stressed the instability of the photo collection, noting that, like the units of a conventional book form library, the units of a photographic library can be removed, dispersed, transferred to other collections, begged, borrowed, and even stolen. There is an unstable quality about even the most apparently permanent of photographic collections. What we have done is fix or record a collection at a particular moment in time, just as a photograph of, say, a moving object is itself a moment frozen in time. The directory took Wall four years to complete. Although he was the beneficiary of the files, collected by a number of other records, including the proposed register of photographic surveys of British buildings in the Isle, in, sorry, register of photographic surveys of buildings in the British Isles, and Colin Osmond's planned National Register of Photographic Archives, most of the research was carried out by Wall and his team. The Sunday Times launched a campaign to help to fund the work, and the RPS published and sold sets of reproductions of the photographs from the Society's collection to provide extra income. I'll just skip here. Some of the collections which Wall listed have since disappeared as unique entities. Some will have been absorbed into larger collections, other donated to libraries and museums, and some of the personal collections may have simply ceased to exist. John Wall could not have foreseen the advent of either digitisation or the corporate and institution absorption and blending of collections. He could not foresee globalisation when individual companies would become part of conglomerates, leaving their archives at the mercy of corporate decision making. The directory remains, as Wall predicted, a moment frozen out of time. I'll show you the film. And there is sound in it that comes in halfway through. Please note, the term photographic collection in the accompanying questionnaire is used to indicate collections of photographs of whatever kind, private or commercial, personal or open to public view, published or unpublished, historic or contemporary, negatives, copy negatives or positive prints, whether or not copyright in the originals or reproduction rights are held by some other person or body elsewhere. It is thus an all-inclusive term and we hope that you will feel able to complete the form in respect of your own collection accordingly. G. Crosby, FRPS, 45 Kings Avenue, Woodford Green, Essex, 22nd of August, 1972. Dear Sir, I am interested in the announcement in the current photographic journal regarding the proposed Dictionary of Photographic Collections and wonder whether my qualifications would be of any use. I retired from advertising 12 months ago, diploma member of the IPA. My work covered all aspects of printing production, leaflet and brochure writing, and editing, typography, layout and makeup, photo engraving, proof checking, etc., and also studio administration. Twenty eighth of march nineteen seventy four. Dear Mr Crosby, thank you for your letter of twenty third of march. I am delighted to learn that you are able to visit us on April the 27th. I appreciate your reasons for wishing to take the earlier train, and I will meet you at the barrier at 11.31. Thank you for your clear description of your good self, which will enable me to certainly identify you. I regret that I am in appearance and dress quite indistinguished, but I will wear a Green National Trust tie to facilitate recognition. Looking forward to seeing you. With all good wishes, John Wall. 
September 22nd, 1980. Dear Dr. Wall, a little over a year ago, Mrs. White of the Public Archives of Canada, London office, made some inquiries about Frederick Daly on my behalf. I shall now take the liberty of writing to you myself. I would very much appreciate any information that you might be able to provide. Thank you for your kind cooperation. I look forward to hearing from you and I shall notify you of the glorious day of publication. Yours sincerely, Jane M. Sports, Photo Archivist, Acquisition Research, National Photography Collection. It is therefore clear, as you surmised, that the London Stereoscopic and Photographic Company was in the same vicinity as Robert Bentley and Sons at 136 Cheapside during the period, circa 1859 to 1862, that Frederick Daly worked there. If I can be of any further help with archival queries, do not hesitate to get in touch. With all good wishes, your sincerely, Dr. John Wall. Dear Dr. Wall, the printers seem to be sending proofs as the directory in drips and drabs, so I will just pass them on to you as I receive them, if I may. Here are the other lids of entries 290 to 681 the set of proofs with running heads and the pro formers. As I say, I shall put the proofs in the post as they come in. Yours sincerely, Elizabeth Blair. Mr. John St. John, William Hyman Limited, 15 Queen Street, Mayfair, London, W1X8BE. 12th of August, 1974. Dear John, thank you for your two letters of 10th of July, and please excuse this delay in replying. This has been due partly to my absence from the office on holiday recently and partly to some small difficulties we have encountered in assembling the material desired. Directory of British Photographic Collections. I am encouraged to learn that you hope to find an American publisher for the directory at Frankfurt. Please find enclosed my latest general description of the whole work. Please feel free to amend or reduce this as you think fit. I have drafted this in the form in which I imagine a publisher's description might be cast but in this I may be mistaken. I am also enclosing a few sample entries as requested, but in respect of the specimen pages, on black and white since we prefer this format, we have not yet received six complete sets as requested from Mr. Rodwell. In the light of the time factor, I am asking Mr. Rodwell to forward these directly to you. If you require any further material, please do not hesitate to get in touch. Thank you for your clarification of the question of communications with Mr. Rodwell. I found your guidelines very helpful and will abide by them in the future. Certainly, if I feel at any time if we at the office are getting out of our depth in this field, I will let you know at once. I think it would be useful if we could meet, even if briefly, in London in the fairly near future. I'm wondering, however, if this could be deferred until my return from a period away from home, which lasts from August 17th to 31st. With all good wishes, yours sincerely, John. Twenty eighth of February nineteen seventy eight, John Wall Esquire, Ashfield, forty five Middleton Lane, Middleton St George, Darlington, DL two one AA. Dear John, Directory of British Photographic Collections, thank you very much for sending me the recent review from the Northern Echo. Certainly a very good one. It just goes to show that some strikes are worthwhile. For sales for the directory as from